guys. Oh, so it's like, what time is it? It's almost 10 o'clock actually, uh, which means that there's a cuckoo clock behind me and it means that that's gonna go off at some point soon. So if it does, uh, we'll either, I'll cut it out or we'll just ignore it. Um, so today, I want to talk about tour bus touring because I was out recently with uh, Tom Bailey from the Thompson Twins and uh, the rest of the band are off to do this US tour in, um, oh I think it's like a week and the majority of the people uh, that are in the band haven't been on a bus tour before and uh, obviously I've, I've been lucky enough to do quite a few uh, with various artists, you don't want to hear about that, that's boring. Um, and I, uh, they were just asking me questions and, and saying, you know, well, you know, what should I do with this and, and, and what happens here and, and what's it like? And so I thought that why not do a video about bus touring and sort of how it works and the best way to kind of navigate it, I guess, and to do a good job, not annoy anyone, because uh, at the end of the day, you're living in close quarters with everyone. And if it's a full bus, because usually, so on a bus, you can, like the standard bus size, although there are bigger ones, allegedly, I've never been on one, but I hear there's bigger ones. Uh, it's a 12 berth bus. And I've been on tours where it's 12 people. And that is, I mean, that is a full bus. That is a very full bus. Um, and if you're going on tour with people that you don't know that well, I guarantee you by the end of doing a tour bus tour with them, you will know more than you ever wanted to know about them. Um, and you will be family for life, basically, and you'll either fall out drastically or you will be, yeah, best of friends, family forever, love them through thick and thin, and I'm quite lucky I've, I've had the majority of the latter, so it's very good. Um, yeah. So let's start out with the layout, since why not? Why not? So when you come into a tour bus, um, it depends on which country you're touring in and where the bus is from because in the UK, generally, they are double-decker buses and then in, uh, and that's the same in Europe as well, uh, in my experience at least, and then in the US, they're like single-decker buses, basically. So um, there's only a slight difference. So say you're on a UK or European bus, you'll come in the doors and you will walk into what is essentially a lounge sort of area uh, with a little kitchenette uh, and then there'll be the driver obviously, that'll be to your right, uh, lounge, kitchenette and then uh, there'll be some stairs going up and that'll lead to the bunks where everyone sleeps and at the back of that there will be another lounge basically that i think there's sometimes lounges at the front as well if i remember rightly um it's, it's been a good five years since i've been on a uk tour bus i think or a european one i think it has no it couldn't have been five years Cher Lloyd, maybe anyway um so yeah so that's like the uk european the american version is you get on where the driver is and then you turn left, obviously, because if you turn right, then you walk into a window, which nobody really needs. Um, you walk into a lounge, kitchenette, then there'll be a toilet. Oh, there is a toilet on the other bus, but I can't even remember where that is. Um, yeah, uh, toilet, and then you have like a doorway, and then there's a galley into the bunks, and then up the back, there's a lounge, and there's like a little wardrobe, maybe, and stuff like that. So that's the general layout. Now, <laughs> the most important thing, no, not the most important thing, one of the most important things is sorting out sleeping arrangements. And if you're about to go on tour, tour manager may email you uh, saying, you know, I'm sorting out bunk allocations, so let me know where you want to be sleeping. And obviously, if you haven't done it before, you don't know where's, where you want to sleep, where you like to sleep. Um, so uh, I just wanted to give you some pros and cons of different uh, sort of areas to sleep within the bunk section. It's 10 o'clock in the morning here. Um, yes, yeah, so usually they're laid out in a couple of different configurations, again, depending on the bus. Um, but the one that I'm most used to is where you have uh, three bunks and then you have uh, another three next to it and then you across aisle you have exactly the same, so 12 in all. 
Um, I personally like sleeping on the bottom bunks closest to the driver, uh, on the right hand side if, side if you're walking in, but actually I, I don't mind which side or where, but bottom is good for me. The reason that I like the bottom side of things is that um, there's less movement because if you're a bit higher then it means that you uh, it's a bit more swayy which is fine I, I wouldn't mind it but my overriding fear is falling out of a bunk so it's good in that you if you roll out of your bunk you ain't gonna crack your head open not that anyone ever has but you know it's 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 much safer um the only downside of sleeping in the bottom bunks is usually there's a, a little slot beneath the bunk which is where people put their shoes so if someone has stinky shoes which on the last tour i did in the states someone really did but we couldn't work out whose shoes it were or anything and it just would not go away um, that's basically next to your face and your nose and it's a it can be a little bit gross but if you can kind of uh, single out the culprit and move their shoes out of the, the galley then it's not too bad um, the other slight downside is that sometimes people uh, stick their feet in your bunk when they're climbing up to go to their bunk. Um, again, it doesn't bother me that much, I'm kind of like, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's bottom bunks. Uh, top bunks, like I say, a bit more sway, but you get a lot more privacy. You get to look out and watch to see who's coming to bed. If, you, if you're a nosy parker, it's a good one. Uh, yeah, it's it's good, and then and then you don't have anyone climbing in your bunk to to get to theirs. Basically, you're sort of top of, top of the tree, as it were, top of the tree. And then the middle is kind of a mixture of the two. So, I mean, depending on how well you think you're going to sleep uh, on the bus, because that's the other thing, I suppose. You don't know. I mean, I think that if you're good at sleeping in cars, like you quite like that movement, you'll probably love sleeping in buses. I love it. I sleep better there than anywhere in the world. Like, it's crazy. And I, if, if a bus is sort of, I can't sleep until the bus starts moving. And if it's a really short journey, I'll be awake as soon as we stop. So if we stop at like three in the morning, I'm like, well, that's me. And I find it really difficult to go back to sleep. I'm sure I manage it because I'm so knackered most of the time. I'm like, uh, well, it's fine. I'm sure I can handle a little cat nap after that. But yeah, so that's basically bunks, I think. Uh, also, inside the bunk, uh, you will have a power socket, hopefully. Sometimes, if it's a really a bit of an older bus, it might be the, um, the cigarette lighter uh, power sockets, like the 12 volt or whatever it is. So wherever you tour just make sure you have one of those adapters just in case i haven't seen it for a couple of years but you never know like they might give you a bus that's like 10 years old or something and you know it's better to be prepared i suppose but usually you'll have like power a power socket in there some buses actually have little windows which is quite nice i quite like those buses and then you have like air con systems so you can get air into your bunks so you don't get too hot um obviously there's bedding there so don't bring don't bring bedding you're fine it's fine um what else in the bunk? oh i'd say as well uh, i'll get to this in a bit um if you can sort of have room to keep a small bag in your bunk so as to not you know, leave it on the bus or whatever, um, then that's that's good. So a, a small bag, like a very small, I don't know, like very small rucksack or, um, yeah, just something that's not going to take up a lot of space that you can keep on there. But I'll go into what you need in that bag in a minute. Um, also, if you're not a full bus, so if you aren't full and there's not 12 of you, say there's like 11 of you and there's a spare bunk, usually you'd call that the junk bunk. And uh, if you do have like a bag to bring on the bus, then you can shove it in there. Um, again, don't bring big bags on the bus because the space is so minimal. Like you just, it just makes for a horrible, it's, it's hard enough fitting 11 or 12 people on a bus comfortably. It's not, sometimes it's just not comfortable and you do have to spread out and whatnot. But to have bags on there as well, it's just a no-go. So make sure your bag is small, make sure it can fit in your bunk. Worst case scenario, worst case scenario. Um, yeah, so I think that's sleeping arrangements. So that's pretty good. Um, and then lounges, lounges are fun. I guess usually on the tours that I've done, front lounge is kind of, the one next to the kitchen is kind of the party lounge. Um, and by party, I don't mean like rock and roll mentalness. I'm talking like sitting up after a show, having a drink, and a chat with everyone and just 
chilling out basically. Um, it's not the most raucous tours that I go on, which is great, suits me fine. I am the least rock and roll person you'll ever meet in your life, guarantee it. Um, so yeah, you can, yeah, that's the, kind of the front lounge. It's kind of more chilled, whatever. Uh, back lounge is more for, yeah, people wanting to be more quiet and uh, I guess, well, a lot of times people that want to sort of like do work or whatever, they'll usually jump in the back lounge because it's less, it's less sociable, I guess. Um, but the only thing I was, that I would say is like, maybe don't, like I like my own company. I love my own company. I've, uh, it's just yeah. I'm a, I'm believe it or not. I'm quite an introverted person, and um, I, I like my quiet time. But what I would say is don't isolate yourself from you know the social situation that's going on around you. And yes, it might be difficult, but it 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 will cause a bit of a strange vibe if you're kind of like separate from everyone all the time so try and you know socialize and enjoy it and just embrace it for what it is and you know worst case scenario if you're getting really overwhelmed you can always like go into your bunk and just watch something on netflix or whatever on your phone and you know there's and, and everyone does that it's not like you know not everyone is on all the time and just like bah, blah, 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 blah. you know everyone does have those moments where they just go and now I need time by myself so I'm going to my bunk I'll see you guys tomorrow I'll see you guys later I'm going for a nap whatever Whatever it is, everyone's the same, you know, um, so that's good. Now, oh no, let's talk about kitchen first. This is very important because it's food, and food is always important in my eyes. It's probably one of my favourite things on the planet is food. Um, so you will have a little kitchenette, and that will probably have, it will definitely have a kettle. Well, no, actually, I say that, you'd be surprised. So in the States, it will definitely have a coffee machine. 100% will have a coffee machine. It probably will have a kettle. If you're in Europe or the UK, completely the reverse. We'll definitely have a kettle, possibly will have a coffee machine. It's getting a little more even Stephen these, these, like, as time goes on. But um, yeah, so right, so that's your morning sewage. You're not gonna be completely, you know, gone. Um, it might have like a toaster. It probably will have a microwave. Uh, and it will have a fridge freezer, I'd imagine, and then a bunch of cupboards with stuff in it. Um, number one rule is there will be a cupboard or a drawer on the bus around the kind of lounge kitchenette vicinity that will be filled with things like Twizzlers and Pop-Tarts or, um, I don't know, Nature Valley bars, I don't know. It will be full of some stuff that, you know, you've got on the bus and it's already in there. Chances are, this is the driver's stuff. Whatever you do, do not eat this stuff. Like, please don't. It will not lead to good things and they will be upset and it's not a good start to any tour. Don't eat the bus driver's stuff, it's not cool. Um, other than that, fill the cupboards with stuff, uh, you know, I remember we used to get, uh, on these American tours, we'd get these frozen, like, what were essentially sort of Egg McMuffin. I mean, they were gross. They were really gross, but they're great if you're hungry and you don't have anything. And just shove a bunch of them in the freezer. And that way, you know, if you happen to be ravenous and you're on a 24-hour bus journey, you can just shove one of them in the microwave and you're good to go. And it's like, right, I'm not going to die of starvation. Great. Um, so that's good. Uh, I remember I used to have porridge on the bus as well for my breakfasts. Um, although it depends on the kind of tour you're doing, because if you're rocking up to a venue and there's catering, eh, you don't need to worry so much, but it just depends on the tour. So you can kind of navigate that one as you go. Um, yeah, so I think that's kitchen. Is there anything else important in the kitchen? Oh, make sure you wash your stuff up. Wash your stuff up. Don't be that person. Nobody likes that person that leaves stuff all around. If you kind of think of it like living in a very small house with 11 other people, just be like considerate basically. It's the same sort of vibe. Um, yeah, and like I say, you're stuck with each other, so be nice and um, be considerate. Um, it's, yeah, it's not cool. Uh, right, now we do get onto the most important thing on the bus. That is the toilet situation. So, there is a loo, or toilet, depending where you're from, a bathroom, whatever. 
um, which is a toilet and a sink and a very small bin. And the reason that I'm saying that is because that bin is very, very important. Um, number one rule, do not do a number two on the bus. Ever. Like, never. Uh, I won't go into the details as to why. You can kind of imagine why. At the end of the day, that bus driver's got to deal with all this and he, you know, who wants to be dealing with that? Uh, and also, don't put anything solid just generally down the toilet. So no like toilet roll, no sanitary towels, whatever. Um, that's why you've got the little bin, the very important little bin. So yeah, use that for instead of putting it down the toilet, put it in the bin. Um, and yeah, I can't stress how important this is. Um, it is the number one cardinal sin if anyone does anything like this. And obviously everyone's gonna need to go at some point. Either you try and time it or hold it or whatever until you get to a venue or a truck stop or whatever. But of course there's gonna be situations where you can't hold it. So my tactic has been obviously ask the driver uh, if we're gonna stop soon. Um, if you're not, ask him if you can. If you can't, because you're on a tight schedule, then you go to plan C, which I've never had to do, but I've, yes, I've been around people that have had to do this. Plastic bag, doubled up, over the toilet bowl, do your business, tie it up super tight with all the toilet roll as well in there, um, super tight and put it in the trash chute and just tell the driver the situation basically. So that will get you out of the a potentially horrendous, awful, you know, embarrassing, humiliating situation. So yes, so that's how you handle that. Um, was that done in a dainty way? I feel like it, it probably wasn't. But anyway, could have been a lot more grotesque. And yeah, anyway, uh, bringing back horrible memories. What else? Oh, uh, be nice to the driver. Standard. Standard issue. If you're going out to get a coffee or whatever, ask the driver if he wants anything. He's like, you know, he's going to be driving through the night. He's the one that's going to be making sure that, you know, you're getting from place to place. He's super important. Or she is super important. I've never met a female bus driver, actually. That's interesting. I've never noticed that. Never met a female bus driver. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure I will at some point. Um, what else can I tell you about? Yes, right. Let's get back to this bus bag that I mentioned that needs to be small enough to kind of fit in your bunk. So a uh, bus bag or a day bag, uh, whatever you want to call it, I, I call it my day bag, is um, basically your things that you will need just day to day on the bus. For instance, like when you first get up, you want to brush your teeth. So have a toothbrush and some toothpaste in there, have some deodorant, have some baby wipes because, you know, everyone's going to stink at some point, um, have a small sort of uh, pharmacy bag as I call it, which has things like ibuprofen, paracetamol, Rennie, um, Imodium, Imodium is very important, uh, what else has it got, like maybe some like Barocca or something like that, something vitamin C or Multivits, whatever. whatever, and obviously if you have medication, oh my gosh, that needs to be in there, um, so have things like that and then have a change of clothes, and, I mean, you can have pyjamas in there, but you can keep your PJs in the bunk if you like. I'd recommend wearing pyjamas as well. It's, um, it's not fun to see someone roll out of their bunk naked. No one, no, like, no one needs to see that, really. Oh, that reminds me, another uh, downside of sleeping in a bottom bunk, which has never happened to me, and it's, I feel like it's an urban legend, although I do know the person that did this, and uh, I think it happened. Anyway, um... I've heard of stories of uh, people being so inebriated, should we say, that they've forgotten where they were and have sort of gotten out of their bunk and started weeing just on the floor in the galley. And the problem with that is sometimes they aim it towards a wall, which is your bunk curtain, and it can go into your bunk. Like I said, I've only heard about this happening once, and it's gross, but it's never happened to me, so... I mean minimal, but anyway, going off on a tangent there, as always. Uh, yes, so what else do you need in your 
uh, bus bag, yeah, things like, I don't know, moisturiser, you know, just day-to-day -day stuff. If you were on the bus for 24 hours, what would you need? Don't bring on, like, you know, I don't know, like a whole bag of makeup or, like, you know, I can't even think of anything. Just, yeah, just unnecessary things. Just enough for, like, 24 hours, small bag. It shouldn't be too difficult, you'd expect. Um, as for where your main bag is, it will be under the bus, so you will only be able to get hold of that uh, when you're actually stopped, um, whether that be at a venue or a truck stop or whatever it is. And just so you know, you will be opening your case and sifting through your underwear in front of the general public and um, it's all going to feel a little bit strange at first, but soon you just go, well, that's the way it is and there we go. Another really important um, point is, uh, say you're at a truck stop getting fuel or the driver's getting some food or whatever, and you say it's like the middle of the night. I say this because this has happened. I've heard more, I've, I've heard a few stories of this happening. It'd be the middle of the night, like three in the morning, four in the morning. Bus driver will get off to get food, whatever, and you decide to get off the bus, but you don't tell anyone because everyone's asleep. And um, including the bus driver, no, sorry, the bus driver isn't asleep. The bus driver doesn't know that you've gotten off. Um, you go off. I'm just gonna go and use the loo, I'm just gonna, oh, I'll just mill around here, I'll just pick up some, you know, crisps or whatever, or a drink or whatever. Um, and then you come back out and the bus is gone. And you're in your pyjamas and you have like nothing. I say that you have nothing because I've just realized I've said you've gone in to go get a packet of crisps and whatever, so you think you have money. Let's, let's take that out of the equation. You've used the toilet and you're in your pyjamas. You don't have a phone, you don't have money you have like nothing and like i said i've heard this happen to people and it's yeah literally a nightmare because these days no one remembers any phone numbers anymore i still remember like my mum's number and i remember my best friend's number because i used to call it like constantly but other than that i'd be completely just like well what am I going to do? In fact, I'd probably call my best friend and say, could you get in touch with whoever I'm on the road with? Um, yeah. And it was, uh, in the cases that I've heard, it was just a case of everyone waking up and going, oh, where's Bob? And they're just like, oh my gosh. And then they'll go ask the driver, like, did you stop somewhere? And they'll be like, yeah. Like, oh my gosh, they're there. So call up that truck stop and lo and behold, they're there sitting in their blooming pyjamas and either you know they have to go back and get them or they have to you know just get them in a not sure what happened there decided to just switch itself off um washing is an interesting one so again it depends on the tour that you're doing um sometimes they the tour manager might sort out a fluff and fold service which is basically you give them or you'll give your tour manager who will give the runner uh your washing uh with an envelope with uh, an amount of money like twenty dollars, or or oh, it just depends where you are. Fluff and fold. I've only done in America, as you can tell. Twenty dollars in there with your name on it, in a in a bag, and send it off in the morning. It will be back by the afternoon, and you'll have clean clothes. Ooh, awesome. Um, obviously sometimes not possible. Uh, if you're going for short runs, not too much of a big deal. If you're going for much longer runs, it can be. What I'd suggest is on your days off, go find a laundrette. Um, if you have a break where you're in like a hotel for a couple of days or something, you can always do some washing like in the bath. I've done that loads of times. Um, really uh, good thing to do to dry your clothes. If you lie out, lay out a towel and then lay out your clothes that are wet and you know clean, uh, cleaned um, on top of them and then roll it as tight as you can um, and then, well, I, I stomp on it because I think it helps and also it's fun. Uh, and then roll it out again. Then it will take away a lot of the moisture. It won't be dry, but it will, it's, what's it, I guess it's the equivalent of like wringing it out, but like an easier version because every time I wring stuff out, I think I've done a really good job and then I just don't. Um, so that's good. That's a really good one. Uh, yeah, so I, it's difficult. Also, if you're in somewhere like the States, uh, I know a lot of the guys that I tour with, um, things like socks, simple thing. In Walmart, you can buy socks for like 
like not a lot basically so they just come on tour with no socks they go to walmart like on the first day and buy this big pack of socks and then every time every day they use a pair they just chuck them i know it's really wasteful i don't personally do it but um it's i mean if it's necessary like it's a good way of doing it and at the end of the day if you're there and you're getting things like pds you know and you've run out of t-shirts just go buy another t-shirt for five dollars or go primark for fiverr or h&m or whatever and and just get another t-shirt like it's these days it's so cheap to just buy clothes like don't be going out buying some chanel or gucci or whatever you can tell that i don't buy high-end stuff because i have no idea what to say um yeah no high-end stuff don't do that because you'll just sweat into it um yeah same with uh, stage clothes they can get pretty minging pretty quick so yeah not good uh same with gym stuff i work out on the road that can be gross like properly gross and like i say when you're on the road with someone that you're working out with and you just smell their stench like you know that sort of stale sweat smell when you're smelling that day in day out when you're working out together you just think yeah we're we're pretty close friends aren't we we're pretty gross basically um yeah i think that's pretty much all i've got to say on this matter i don't think there's anything else if there is i'm sure that i'll put something else out at some point um, but I think the main thing is just enjoy it. enjoy the company that you're on the bus with and the other thing is you know if you're on a bus with 11 other people chances are there's gonna be one person that you maybe don't get on with um, be considerate of that like just either try to make good conversation or just don't ignore definitely don't ignore but maybe try and you know just be sensitive to the fact that you're on a bus together for a long time probably and it's like family you've always got that one person in your family that you just don't get on with that well but they're family and you love them it's exactly the same every band i've ever toured with i feel like they're family i would do anything for them some of them really wind me up like they really do but i love them like i do it's just it's just how it is like you love and hate each other you do anything and and when things get tough you stick together and and it does get tough on the road for various reasons but um yeah if you can kind of come at it with a good attitude then i think you'll have fun i mean that's what it's about at the end of the day isn't it this passion and enjoyment and gigging every night and and oh you will be exhausted by the way yeah that but that's just touring generally i think um but yeah anyway i hope that these tips have helped i'm sorry if i've rambled a bit i'm quite good at rambling um and yeah uh if you are about to go on a bus tour enjoy it have fun let me know how you get on uh ask me any questions whilst you're on the road if if you're sort of like lying in your bunker oh my gosh like, i need to go and do this and They've asked me to do that, but I don't know what that means. Just, just like, yeah, call me out on social media and just ask me and I'll, I'll get back to you. And I'll try and help if I can. Or I might just go, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but yes, anyway, uh, if you have any other questions, then please feel free to leave a comment. I will be replying religiously to these because um, it's really important to me to get out some information to help. I hope I have helped. Um, and yeah i'll be back with another one of these videos rambling on about another subject no doubt um but until then hope you're well and yeah i'll speak to you soon bye